Hello this is Mark from tradingform.com and welcome to this video on how to calculate a trailing stop using Excel. So the backtest model that we're going to use in this video is based on my ebook course how to backtest a trading strategy using Excel. Now there is a link on the screen if you'd like more information about this course. The model that we're using for this video at the moment is testing a MACD trading strategy and the strategy entry criteria are to enter whenever the price for the MACD histogram or the, the level of the MACD histogram goes from negative to positive. We're using S&P 500 data and we're using the weekly time frame. OK, so in this model we calculate our profit target and our stop loss based on multiples, the distance of these, based on multiples of the ATR, the average true range. And we're going to use the same method to calculate the distance of our trading stop. So I've set up a, a cell here which I've entered the initial value of 2 and that we're going to use this as a multiplier, multiple of the ATR to set, to set our trailing stop distance. The trailing stop that we're going to use is going to be based on the high point from the previous time period, the previous bar. And we have to use the previous bar because we can't use the current bar because we don't know in which order the low and the high point occurred can safely use the previous time period and that's what we're going to do in this case. So we've got here the formula that we're using at the moment to calculate our stop loss price. We're using a if function and if we have a look at it here in the formula bar we can see that what the formula does is it checks this column here, column T which is our trade entry column and it checks to see whether a trade was entered and if so, it does this calculation to set the stop loss price. And if not, it will just enter the previous period's value. We're going to keep the first part of this formula exactly the same because we want to maintain every time there's a new trade, we're going to set the stop loss according to our original method. However, when there's not a new trade, what we're going to want to do is check to see whether or not our stop loss should be moved and we're going to do this by using a nested if and function so I've just typed in if and and the first thing I'm going to check is whether or not this cell the cell that I've mentioned as being our ATR trading stop multiplier press F4 is greater than zero and so this way that we can use this cell as our trading stop multiplier and if we want to we can set zero to turn off the trading stop so it becomes a switch as well as the cell that we use to set the value of the trading stop next thing I'm going to check is our trade running counter I'm going to check the current period is equal to the cell here F4 because we don't want our stop loss to recalculate when we haven't got a trade running. I'm also going to check that this cell here, our trade entry, does not equal long in the previous time period. This is because our trade entry is based on closing price data and if the trade had occurred in the period, previous period the high point would have actually occurred before our trade was entered so it's not valid for our trailing stop. Okay, the last thing I'm going to check in our if and function is whether or not we need to move our trading stop, our trailing stop. So we're going to take the previous period's high point, we're going to subtract from that our trailing stop multiplier multiplied by the ATR. Close our brackets. And we're going to see whether this is greater than stop loss of the previous period. 
Okay, I'm going to close the AND part of that and we're going to tell the formula what to do if all of these have been met. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part of our function, which is the high minus the trailing stop multiplier multiplied by the ATR and press control C to copy it. I'm going to move it to here. Okay, so basically if our trailing stop shows a value that's higher than our existing stop loss then move the stop loss to the new value. If none of these things are true or if not any of these things are true then we just keep the previous value. Close the formula and go into the formula double click on the small square at the bottom right hand corner of the cell to copy the formula down. Okay so now we have adjusted the formula here. We can see in this example here that as the trade has moved in our favour, the price of our stop loss has got higher. What we haven't changed though is because we have a separate column to measure the, the loss, the actual dollar loss that will occur if our stop loss is triggered, we need to make sure that this stays in exact proportion to the distance between the entry price and the stop loss price. So at the moment we can do this very simply and the formula we've got in here multiplies, if I click in here, it multiplies our percentage loss here with the capital. Okay, this is quite simple and this will still be the case. In one situation. So I'm going to use an if statement here and I'm going to use it if our trade entry column shows long then it's going to have to do this formula. However in other cases we're going to have to look at the distance and see whether our stop loss has changed. The distance between the entry price and the stop loss price. So I'm going to do this by taking the entry price minus the stop loss price and divide it by the same sum in the previous period. I'm going to put all of these in brackets so we know which sum is which. I'm going to multiply it all by our previous value here. And I'm going to close the if statement. Again, I'm going to copy this down. So now that we can see as our trading stop gets higher in proportion to that our stop loss loss gets lower. So in the end we're only losing 278 from initial potential loss of $743. Okay so there is the spreadsheet for most situations. Most situations that we will encounter we have our trailing stop. However there is one further amendment that we can do to neaten up the spreadsheet. There is a situation that can occur on occasions and that is that the entry price and the stop loss price will be exactly equal to one another. If this occurs we're going to have an error in our formula because Excel can't divide by zero. So what we need to do is have a look at this part of the formula here. In this part of the formula we adjusted our stop loss price and to get around this divided by zero error what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this here I'm going to put in one final nested if statement and I'm going to check if this formula is, if this formula is equal to our entry price which is the danger that we were concerned about then what we need to do is or one way around it, there are other way around it, what I'm going to do is just increase our stop loss by a tiny fraction. And if this is not the case, if they're not equal to one another, then just carry on as normal and enter this value. 
we close up that logical test and then we can press enter again here. Again I can copy this down to all the cells below and there we have our final calculation. Looking at it there in the formula bar it seems very complicated but as you've seen going through all these steps it isn't that complicated really. We've just got all the logical steps included and in the final if we scroll down here we'll see in the final end of the spreadsheet we have the profitability of the trading strategy that has been calculated correctly. Okay so I hope you found that useful if you'd like more information about using Excel to backtesting trading strategies and about the financial markets please go to www.tradingformed.com dot com